Hello, I'm Joshua Finn from JNH Aerospace. Today we're going to build the Folkwolf P1, uh, a proposed jet um, aircraft from Germany in World War II. So this is for a Flying Aces Club scale jet catapult uh, contest event. Um, as of the taping of this, I have not flown this airplane. So what I'm, my point to you here is this is a profile scale airplane. This is a, uh, a Miles M52, for example. I think it's an M52, something like that. Um, you can tell it's been a while since I've done a whole lot of scale modeling. Um, so, so here's the thing. I'm not going to give you a whole lot of advice on trimming these or what have you because scale catapult gliders are quite challenging to fly. They're fun, but challenging, and if you can get over 20 seconds, you know, you're, you're doing good. Uh, so, without further ado, let's go through the inventory in this kit. Got your cover sheet here. Um, within your instructions here, I have included um, the uh, parts layout, um, three view on the front page, and a um, uh, drawing of all the parts. I have not included any scale data, and the reason for that is all of the scale data that's out there is uh, has copyrights associated with it. So um, I can point you to it. If you are having trouble finding that information, please email me uh, through our website um, and I will email you that information, but I can't make it available in the kit because of the, the copyright restrictions. So, what we have is we have our, our wing with the, uh, our little dihedral gauges. Uh, we have our fuselage, which is in two pieces just because of uh, size constraints. We have our tail surfaces, and we have a um, little catapult hook that you'll use. Uh, the dowel for your catapult um, uh, and your uh, rubber band, and some clay uh, balancing weight. So this is a fairly straightforward build. Uh, what we'll do is we'll start by cutting out our fuselage here. And I'm breaking all the rules tonight. I am using an old razor blade. So basically, don't be like me. Alright, so we pop our fuselage parts out, remove the little slots for your uh, wing and your, um, and your stab. And so you've got this result, and what we'll do is we're going to join those together. And I'm a little low on CA, so this video will be, will have a little bit of comic relief to it, in addition to um, everything else. So once you've got that joined, um, you do some sanding. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on, on all of this part of it, um, but if I were, you know, if, if you're looking to compete with this airplane, you want to get all of the laser burn marks off. Uh, you can use like bleach or something of that nature to remove those. Um, but again, I'm not going to delve deeply into that because I don't know if you're buying this just because you think a scale uh, catapult glider is cool or if you're actually going to uh, compete with it. So um, those of you that think it's cool, it doesn't matter. And those of you that are flying this competitively are probably, um, you probably have your own method already and are telling me to shut up um, because mine is not it. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that either. Um, you can round off the edges. I'm not going to do that just because I'm not. Um, next thing we'll do here is we'll pop the wing out. There we go. 
something that wanting to hold on there. There we go. Now you'll see some funny um, shapes to the outline of this. These were uh, trim tabs on the um, supposedly were going to be trim tabs on the actual aircraft. Again, this is all kind of theoretical because the airplane never got built because the uh, war ended before it could be. There are a lot of different airfoils you can carve for these. Um, I'm going to go for something resembling of a, a stand foil just because that's what I always use. It's a tapered wing plan, plan form, so you have to decide what you want to do. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about what airfoil I'm carving in here, uh, simply because, again, this is kind of up to your personal taste. And we'll come back when um, I finish carving this to shape. Okay, we have um, carved an airfoil in here. I've kind of got a high point that's running about a third of the way back all along. Um, so at this point, we're going to sand all of this in to smooth it out. I have not been super um, detailed about the airfoil here, just because, again, this is not one of those extreme thermal hunting machines. I'm going to sand in a little bit of Phillips entry on the leading edge here. Kind of round off the wing tips here. So, there's a pitfall for y'all to take note of. We'll glue that back on in a second. And there we go. So, get that glue here. So, with all of that taken care of, we're going to saw the wing in half here. And because these leading and trailing edges are really unsupported here, Right. Use the razor blade to cut them. There we go. And then we'll bevel these for dihedral. Close enough. Okay, so you've got these two 
dihedral gauges here. And what those are is that's the amount of dihedral you need on each side. Now what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually just going to glue these together. And that way I can just do one side flat and add the dihedral to the other side. And there we go. And now we will test fit this into our fuselage. And it fits just fine. Um, there's some gap. Uh, on the front and back, you can, um, if you're flying this competitively, I would suggest filling that in a little bit. And then, There we go. Alright, so we're almost done. Um, I'm going to free our tail surfaces here. First thing we'll do, our um, vertical tail fits on top here. Um, you can fare this in so that it mates a little better. This part belongs on our blooper reel or something. We'll be back after I finish fighting with that. Try to get that on nice and straight. There we go. Now, of course, you can um, stand this all nice and round if you like. It's one thirty-second balsa, so not hugely important. And then, we will go ahead and just give this a light sanding. And, just 
stab fits in place. Now you'll notice the stab has some play here. That's so that the little trim tabs um, can clear. So now what we'll do is you've got those little centering marks. Um, one of the unfortunate laws of physics is that those centering marks get hidden. So you're going to have to eyeball the side-to-side -side alignment, get it more or less level, and there you go. Alright, so, now we've got CA leaking out here from the glue fillets. So we're going to break out our catapult hook. Catapult hook you can put down here, more or less. And what I like to do is just embed it into the nose. Have it angled back enough that the um, lighter won't slip off the catapult. Now, um, I'm going to show you how to CG this thing while well, my recommended CGing procedure. Uh, again, this is um, an airplane, it's going to be a little harder to get it to, to fly super well, so uh, where you decide to put your CG is, is really down to. How brave you are with these. Um, the other thing is, I haven't put a finish on this airplane or anything of that nature, so the CG is going to move. Um, so it, this is not the stage to, to balance your airplane. And if you're looking to be really competitive with these, I would suggest um, actually once you get it balanced. Uh, cut into the fuselage and put lead in there to, um, to set your CG because that uh, gets you better scale points. Um, right, so I currently have this guy balanced. Um, still a little too far back. I would put the CG about 50% uh, of root cord which since the wings kind of tapered the same way front and back is basically just going to be halfway along, even with those fairings and whatnot. It's uh, very close, and then you can uh, tweak it from there. So yeah, that's about 50% right there. Um, and that's a good place to, to start. Uh, you can put a wash-in wedge on here and whatnot to get started with your trimming. So I would put a take a, a scrap here, and I'll show you how to do this real quick. Uh, just in case you're unfamiliar, um, uh, although we do have plenty of, of videos um, on this topic. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting a, a piece just for scale. It's about uh, a little shorter than the carrier sheet for your catapult hook. Actually the same as the uh, smaller dimension on it. About a um, quarter inch wide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut diagonally through it. And so now I get this, um, this one's better, this little wedge cross section. And since I'm right handed, I'm going to want this on the left wing. I'm going to fly the airplane to the left. Um, and I would glue this really um, just inboard of this trim tab out here. And then you can, uh, when you paint over that, you can conceal it fairly well. Um, again, like I said, scale data and whatnot is kind of up to you. Go Google it, and um, the uh, it's the Folk Wolf P1. And like I said, you can email me if you uh, if you come up dry on that, and I, I will direct you to the information. Um, but as I said before, it is copyrighted. So anyway, um, that's how you build it. Um, refer to our trimming tutorial on how to trim. Uh, gliders from a, a general sense and hopefully eventually we'll get some video footage of this thing actually flying and you can, can see how it goes. So 
Thank you. Have a good, have a nice day. So I forgot one thing. You kind of need a catapult. So we will show you that because it is important. Tie the little rubber bands ends here. Do it a second time. And then loop this thing back on itself and put the knot somewhere in the middle. And then stick your fingers through, reach them over, and stick the catapult handle through that. You're good to go. And for launching this one, I would grip it right there because the, the back of the engine nacelle the works out as a pretty good hand grip. So, see ya.